rent got too expensive, had to leave LA So I got into my car and I went away to the big estate Playing poker every day Going all in with these fish like I'm mad and all you can eat buffet We get some barbecue to go and make the three hour drive south from Dallas to Austin and immediately find ourselves at the new Q2 stadium for a different kind of football matchup this time between Team USA and Jamaica. Check out the stadium. We then head inside just in time to hear the national anthems and kickoff. The vibes are immaculate. Team USA jumps out to an early 1-0 lead and then by the final whistle, they win 2-0. We then head over to the Lodge, aka the Lodge Mahal, for a live stream game that we're stoked to be playing in. We're first up on the list though, so we dabble in the 1-3 uncapped game and end up profiting $561. A seat then opens up and we gladly take it. We're in for just under $2,000 to the live stream and I look down in the plus one position at not six deuce of diamonds. Your boy's not playing that this early into the stream. I actually have king jack offsuit here so proceed with that information. $10 straddles on and I make it $45. Sam puts in the call from the cutoff with 10 deuce of clubs. TM in the big blind puts in the call with 10 three of diamonds so pretty interesting calls already. And the only one that really makes sense here is Jaywin in the straddle position with King Jack offsuit. And he puts in the call as well, scoring so four ways to the flop, which comes ace, ace, four, rainbow. Actually, a pretty good board for our range. If I had an ace in the situation, I would check it as well. So when the action checks to me, I decide to start with a check. And Sam in the cutoff decides to check behind. So we see the three of hearts come in on the turn. TM now picks up a pair of threes, but checks it over to Jaywin, who checks it to me. And if I had an ace in my range, I'd now start betting to get some value. So that's what I decided to do here and represent all the aces in my range. I lead out for $80, a delayed c-bet on my part. The graphics are a little bit wrong in this hand here. I didn't check it over to Sam and he did not bet. He actually calls my $80 bet to the actions back on TM, who has a decision with a turned pair here. As you can see, he has 62% equity here. So when he folds, that's a pretty big win for us here. And speaking of wins, the action is on Jaywin. He has the same hand as me, even though the graphics do not show it. He says a few things things to the dealer before smiling and laughing as we're going three ways in between two opponents to the river. River does not give us any help, it comes a seven of diamonds. When we get called in two spots here, it's likely someone has a heart draw, it's likely someone has maybe a pocket pair, or someone could be slow playing an ace. Jaywin pretty quickly checks it over to me for the third time here, and I start to take some green chips and assemble a pile of $300. My story is pretty consistent with an ace. There wasn't anything to be worried about on the flop, that's why I checked into other opponents. When the three of hearts comes on the turn, I start betting and then continue betting on the river. Sam's done with the hand, he just has 10 high here. The action's back onto Jaywin, who pretty quickly folds his cards. I turn over the king jack offsuit, showing the table we had just king high. Hi. We're going to take down $297 worth of profit in a $650 pot right out of the gate. Second hand from the live stream, and the graphics are correct on this one. TM raises it up to $25 from the plus one position. We look down at ace queen offsuit from plus three. Obviously, going to be three betting here. I pop it up to $80. And the action's on the player to my left, Jacob, who has the exact same hand, just of the different varieties. He decides to flat call the $80 bet, so the action's back onto TM with deuce four of diamonds in the plus one position. He didn't raise it up to fold for a few dollars more. So he puts in the additional chips and we're going three ways to the flop. Flops an action one, it comes queen, eight, six with two diamonds. Obviously me and Jacob both have top top. TM has the four high flush draw and he checks it over to me. In between two opponents, I usually like to start with a check. Although this is a pretty draw heavy board. Seven, nine is an open ended straight draw. There are worse queens that we could get value from. And additionally, we could get value from the obvious front door flush draw like TM has. When I check it over to Jacob though, he doesn't want to check behind here for some of the reasons I just mentioned. He decides on a bet sizing of $175 and the actions on TM. Well, the action's not on him anymore. He just rips it all in a snap shove for $754 and now the action's back onto me. And I love Slick Rick, but apparently he roasts me for having a Von Dutch hat. He has no idea what it is. The other announcer then asked him if he'd wear a Von Dutch hat and this is his response. Wolfgang, I'm trying to read what his, sh his hat says. It says Von Dutch. Von Dutch, what is that? It's just a clothing company. They make, uh, you know, 
hats and shirts and stuff like that. All right. Yeah. You want to get you a Von Dutch hat? Please don't. No, I'm not. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have ever heard of Von Dutch. To me, it's a pretty common brand, but I guess out here in Texas, they're not in tune with the Von Dutch leopard hats. Usually in these situations where I check in between two opponents, then it goes bet raise. I'm not really loving life, and I can find myself getting away from a certain percentage of my hands, but ace queen offsuit here having top top is just not one of those hands I can get away from. We're at the top of our range here, so I decide to put in the call for $754 in the actions on Jacob who tanks for a pretty long time. He tanks for so long that Slick Rick plays a funny audio over the live stream. T -t -t Today, Junior! Before ultimately making the right call, so we're going three ways to the turn with one player all in. Turns an interesting card, it comes the eight of spades, and now removes some pocket pairs from the other opponent's range. So if he had pocket eights, it makes it less likely he would have that now, as there's only one combination of that left. The only hand that he could really have here that has us beat is pocket sixes. So for that reason, we're either chopping against ace queen, or we have king queen and queen jack dominated. So I decide to put him to the test here and rip it all in for my effective stack, 1100 dollars is the bet. Mr. Clean, I, I mean Jacob, he thinks about it for a little while here. Obviously, if he's thinking about it for so long on the flop, he's going to think about it here on the turn as well. But ultimately, I won't waste your guys' time. He decides to put in the money $1,100 more, probably thinking the same way as me. Pocket eights are a pretty hard hand to have. So him here with ace queen is a pretty good hand to call off here for $1,100 more. And we're going off to the river. Here at the lodge, when there's no more action, we turn our cards face up. Obviously, I can see now that Jacob has ace queen so unfortunately i could not get him off a chop but we're still in a bit of trouble here against tm even though he only has 16 percent equity it still is a sweat 4.7k pot and we're looking for no diamond on the river which does not come it comes a six of clubs i pound the table in excitement as we're going to chop up tm's money 421 dollars coming our way although it would have been cooler to win 420 dollars from jacob since all of you guys think i am the biggest stoner on the planet pull out my phone to take some short form content from instagram reels and youtube and that's going to do it from our short session here on the live stream we take our chips and head to the cage we ended up profiting around 400 hundred dollars on that live stream so up already nine hundred and sixty one dollars on the night we end up calling it a night don't worry the vlog's not over just yet we're just getting started here the next day we head over to perry's to get the pork chop special with alex from the lodge and caitlin from palm social pork chop was absolutely insane and on fridays they give you like 60 percent off normally it's a 45 dollar pork chop but today it's only 17 dollars we then head back over to the lodge with alex to mix it up in the one two streets we're in for 300 dollars First hand to note, we look down at king queen offsuit from under the gun, and I raise it up to $15, and we get four callers, so going five ways to the flop here, which comes king, four, five with two spades. Obviously, a pretty good board for our hand, so I decide to go for a c-bet here of $25. The action folds back around to the big blind, whose name is John. He puts in the call, and we see the five of diamonds on the turn. John checks it over to me, and now I size up for $75, looking to target the spade draws in the opponent's range, as well as king jack, king 10. I doubt he's going to have ace king here since he didn't three bet me preflop john pretty quickly puts in the call so we see the seven of hearts on the river not really scared of too much john checks it over to me for a third time when the spade draws miss i think we could bet small here just looking to target the worst kings and his range and get one last small street of value from john so i bet out here for 60 dollars looking to do so and he snap calls me and turns over 5 10 of clubs so he called 15 dollars pre and then called 25 dollars on the flop just to turn trips and then end up getting a large pot off me here in this one two game nice hand john 380 dollars going his way no you're not yeah. all day every day you're delusional from working eight hours straight oh. yeah. we'll find out guys stay tuned no worries, we rebuy for $160 more and we get help in the form of pocket aces from the small blind. Middle position just rips it all in for $55 and his left puts in the call. The cutoff now calls all in for $37. What the heck is happening here? We have pocket aces in the small blind and the action is already insane. I have a decision here between raising and just flat calling the middle position. I decide to play it tricky here and just put in the $55 since we're only going against one other player, the middle position player. We're going four ways to the flop with just one other player left to act. Flop 
comes Jack, 3-4 with two diamonds, a pretty great board for us as we have an overpair. If he has any jacks in his range, he's going to feel supremely confident in his holdings. I lead out for $55 here, looking to get value from those hands and maybe the diamond draws as well, but unfortunately the middle position decides to fold, so we're off to a run out. Turn comes the 10 of clubs, river comes the 7 of clubs, I turn over my pocket aces, the middle position turns over ace queen, the cutoff turns over pocket 5, so we're going to take down that $202 pot with our bullets. Nice to build some momentum. Here. I then look down at ace king offsuit and I raise it up to $15. Get two callers, so going three ways to the flop, which comes five four deuce with two diamonds. We have the king of diamonds in our hand and additionally we have the gutter to the wheel. When the action checks to me, I decide to check behind as this board will connect better with the other two opponents rather than my preflop raising range. So we're off to the turn which comes the three of clubs giving us the wheel. We're only scared of an opponent having a hand like five six so obviously he'd have a better straight. Now the undergun decides that the three of clubs is a good card for him to lead out on. He bets out for $20. Actions on me and I put in the $20 as well and the cutoff does as as well so we're still three ways to the river 108 in the pot the river comes the jack of clubs really shouldn't change anything as we have a straight under the gun does not slow down though he bets out for $40 I don't really think there's too much merit in raising here as we're only going to get called by better hands maybe sets would call us here but I think that's a little ambitious so I just decide to flick in one chip indicating to the dealer that I call and now the cutoff goes all in for $200. Under the gun gets out of the way and the action's back onto me. Pretty strange line here from the cutoff when he just calls on the turn and now rips it all in on the river. What six is he representing here? He'd probably raise on the turn if he had any sixes in his range as there is a diamond draw out there. Four or five of diamonds on the flop. So I think he's being ambitious here and trying to get us off a chop. Just win all the money outright. When I just call the under the gun player, I'm capping my range. I don't have any sixes in it as well as I'd obviously raise it there. So it's a pretty smart move from the cutoff to rip it all in here for $200. For those reasons, I toss in one red chip. That's a call. And unfortunately though, the cutoff turns over 8-6 of hearts, not what we wanted to see. He obviously has the better straight. Pretty strange though that he didn't raise on the turn given the fact that there was a flush draw out there. Oh well though, his call on the turn got him the maximum value here, straight over straight, and he's going to take down that $548 pot. Things are just not going our way on the session. Four fifty in our stack, we look down at Ace King of Spades, and I raise it up to fifteen dollars. We get two callers here, so going three ways to the flop. Flop gives us a gutter to Broadway, comes Queen 10 6 with two hearts. Against two other opponents, I decide to start with a check, and the action checks around, so we're gonna hope for a check on the turn, which does not come, but it gives us top pair, comes a King of Diamonds. Additionally, it does not bring in the front door flush draw, so we like that a lot. Small blind bets out for $25, representing a hand like King 10, King Queen, or just any flush draw that wants to get value here. Maybe a hand like Jack 9 as well for the straight. I could put in the raise here, but I think we're only going to get called by better hands. Probably the draws are just going to fold. So for that reason, I put in the call. When the 7 of clubs comes on the river, that's a pretty great card for us. As if we were ahead on the turn, we're going to be ahead on the river as well. Small blind bets out for $27 into the $95 pot. And I think about my action for a little while. My logic on the turn was pretty sound. I think we would only get called by better if we put in a raise here. Queen 10, King queen set of sixes set of tens hands like that are just going to be calling us and all the missed draws are just going to fold for that reason i toss in the call and sure enough the opponent turns over queen 10 offsuit so we flop two pair and he's going to take down that 149 dollar pot ace king for the third time in a row hopefully third time is a charm i raise it up to 15 dollars again and the player on my left puts in the call hijack now raises it up to 40 dollars a three bet here from the hijack is pretty strong but when the action folds back around to me i'm tired of losing with ace king King. It's a premium hand, the suited variety. I go for the four bet to $140. Player to my left gets out of the way, and the hijack now thinks about her options. Doesn't think too long though before ripping it all in for $350 effective. Obviously, the five bet shove is just so strong. It's probably queens plus here, and queens, I don't even know if it's doing that. It probably would just flat call. So it's pretty much kings and aces, although we do block both of those hands. But we didn't four bet ace king of diamonds to fold to an all in here, and I'm stuck in the session as well. So I put in the call going off to the run out here in a $715 pot. We really need to win this one.
one to get anywhere close to even in the session. Flop gives us top pair, comes ace, eight, five. We're now hoping she has pocket kings or queens, would be amazing for us. Turn comes a seven of diamonds, river, six of hearts. It's unlikely that she rivered a straight or a set in this situation. She has one of three hands here, queens, kings, or aces. Two out of the three we beat. Fortunately for us though, she turns over the one that we do not beat, pocket aces, and she's gonna take down that $715 pot. We just cannot catch a break here at the lodge. I'm gonna have to rebuy for $400 more. Okay, we're done with ace king. Ace high just isn't cutting it for us. We look down at pocket queens now from the small blind. When the button limps, I decide to pop it up to $15. He puts in the cost going heads up out of position to the flop. Flop's pretty good. It comes queen, 10, six, bang, we flop top set. Can't believe that's the first time I'm saying this in the video. It's been a rough session so far, but nice to flop top set here and have the nuts on the board. I check it over to the button looking to induce him to bet and he does not. He checks behind and we're off to the turn which comes a queen of hearts. Bang for the second time in the hand we turn quads. Not great though when the opponent checks back on the turn as he probably doesn't have too much here. But with quads in the hand we need to start putting some money in the pot. I lead out for $15. To our surprise the button puts in the call so we're going off to the river which comes a king of spades. Pretty great card as now if he picks up a king he probably won't fold to us. Additionally jack nine now makes a straight. Fortunate for us it was not the king of clubs as it would have brought in a lot more things like the front door flush draw as well. With $65 in the pot the opponent only has around 120 left in his stack. I want to put him to the test and I rip it all in for $120 just looking to get maximum value with the nuts on this board. Unfortunately for us, the opponent mucks his cards pretty quickly, but when you're stuck in a session as much as I am, it's pretty nice to have something positive go for you like quads. What could be better than pocket quads at the Lodge Mahal? Okay, we're done with pocket queens. We're back to ace king. There's one limp to us and I raise it up to $15. We get three calls here. So no shortage of action at the lodge. And now the limper raises it up to $140. Pretty strange play as usually when people limp raise, they have pocket aces or pocket kings. Pretty old school play here. But if he has pocket aces, we're just going to have to pay him off. I rip it all in for $250. Ace king is still going to be ahead of a large portion of his range. King queen, ace queen. And we're flipping with hands like queens, jacks, or tens. Action folds back around to him and he puts in the call squaring heads up to a run out which comes ace 3-3. Three, three. Turn comes the queen of diamonds. River comes a six of hearts. Not really too sure what to make of this board as ace queen now has us beat. Pocket queens has us beat. But when I turn over my ace king he mocks his card so finally we win a big all in. $545 coming our way. Not really too sure what he had. We then look down at ace queen offsuit from the button. The $5 straddles on. There's one call to me and I raise it up to $20. The big blind and both the straddler and the caller put in the call for $20. So we're going four ways to the flop. Looking for an ace high board with $80 in the pot, which is exactly what comes ace eight seven. We have top pair with a queen kicker. The action checks to me and I think I make a mistake here by checking behind. My logic in the hand was there's three other opponents in there. And there's no flush draw on board. So the only drawing hands that I'm scared that could catch up on the turn are like hands like 9, 10 or 5, 6. So if we don't see a card on the turn like a 4, 6 or a jack, we can confidently bet and get some value. I check behind and we're off to the turn which comes a 3 of hearts. A complete brick. I don't expect any of the opponents to catch up with a 3 of hearts. When the action checks to me for a second time, I go for a half pot size bet here of $40. The under the gun and the middle position both put in the call. So we're going three ways to the river which comes the deuce of spades. Another brick. The only hand that now gets there is 4, 5. Both the under the gun and the middle position checked to me for a third time. So I think I confidently can go for a second street of value here. I bet out for $80, just less than half the pot. Both the opponents fold though, so unfortunately no more value for us, but nice to take down another pot and build some momentum for the next hand where we look down at ace-king offsuit and I raise it up to $16. It's a $5 straddle on and two players call my $16 raise. Now the action's on the small blind. Small blind doesn't want to play for $15 more. He goes for the raise to $40. Seems to be the theme of the night. I pop it up with ace-king and we either get three bet or four bet. For some reason in the moment, I do not go for the re-re-raise. I just decide to put in the $40 and both the other players do as well so we're going four ways to the flop which comes king six four pretty great flop for us five ways top top is a great hand when the action gets checked to me and they give up the betting lead i decide to go for value here and protect my hand against some of the draws there's obviously the front door club draw five seven is the open-ended straight draw and we can get value from a hand like king queen or king jack 
I bet out for $75. The only player that puts in the call is the small blind, so going heads up in position to the turn. Turn comes the eight of diamonds, which does bring in the five seven straight draw, now having an eight high straight. Small blind checks it to me for a second time now, and I decide to get another street of value. I bet out for $75 again. Small blind does not think about it for a second. He rips it all in with one chip for $325 effective. I think about my options for a little while here. Obviously, I'm either calling or folding, but the speed of his all in is making me think I need to fold. Any of the hands that we want him to have that we have beat would probably think in posture for a second before ripping it all in. So I think his snap all in is a tell. He has a nutted hand, maybe a set, maybe a straight, maybe he has an overpair like pocket aces. So I make a disciplined lay down here with top top and I muck my cards. The opponent is nice enough to put us out of our misery. He shows his hand, the bullets, pocket aces. So like I thought, his snap all in was a tell. He didn't think about it for a second. He knew he had the best hand, just rips it all in with the bullets. Even though I lost this hand, I'm pretty stoked with the way I played it. I went for value and then when the opponent showed the strength of his hand, I confidently got away from it and saved like $250 more. So even though the opponent's taking down this $425 pot, pretty stoked to save another $250 more. Four thirty in our stack, we look down at the jiggities on the button. Middle position raises it up to ten dollars, and he gets two callers and the actions onto me. Obviously, having a hand like pocket jacks, we need to protect it. We need to get value. I raise it up to fifty-five dollars. We're gonna get three callers here from the under the gun middle position, and the cutoffs are going four ways in position to the flop. Flop's an interesting one. It comes ace seven four rainbow. When the action checks to me, I'm gonna have all the strong aces in my range. The other opponents in the hand just call call the ten dollars and then the fifty-five. So I don't think any of them are going to have a hand like ace king ace queen here so when the action checks to me i bet my range into this 223 dollars pot for 60 dollars around a quarter the size of the pot under the gun puts in the call the middle position does as well and nobody's folding in this hand apparently the cutoff does as well so we're still four ways to the turn looking for a jack on the turn that would be an absolute miracle and a session saver but the dealer did not get the memo he puts out the eight of diamonds and now the under gun just rips it all in for 275 the open-ended straight draw now gets there with 5-6 having an 8 high straight. Middle position gets out of the way. And now the cutoff reshoves all in for $330. Obviously a no-brainer decision for us. I muck my cards. Pocket jacks is just never going to be good here. And we're going to see the run out. The river comes the 10 of diamonds. The cutoff shows pocket eights for a turn set. And the under the gun mucks his card. So 1k pot at $1, $2 blinds here going the way of the cutoff when he turns a set after calling the flop with pocket eights. Pretty strange play from him there, but he gets rewarded and is going to scoop that 1k pot. If we have any hope in the session of getting unstuck, our savior is definitely going to be Alex, the floor man here at the lodge. He's a great guy and even better to have at your table as he spices up the action every chance that he gets. He comes and sits at our table and we look down at pocket kings and Alex does not waste any time before raising it up to $15 folds to me and we have some history i pop it up to 55 dollars as i would do with pocket kings here but i'd also do that with like seven eight of clubs and he puts in the call flop's not great it comes ace ten nine rainbow we're first to act so i decide to bet my range here into this 112 dollar pot for 51 dollars the one dollar is just there to tilt alex and obviously it does the trick he puts in the call so we're heads up to the turn turn comes the nine of hearts really shouldn't change too much and i decide to check it over to him if he's calling the flop he either has a hand that beats us like an ace or he has a draw or a hand that wants to bluff with. So I decided to check it over to Alex and look to pick off his bluffs. I'm not going to be folding for a bet here. Given the fact that I say I'm trapping him here on the turn, he bets out for $80 and I'm not going to be folding here. He could be doing this with a hand like Queen Jack or a 10 or just some random other hand that I can't put him on. So I put in the call and we're off to the river. River comes the deuce of hearts really doesn't change too much. Nothing for me to do other than to check it over to Alex. If he's going to go all in, we're going to pick him off. We only have around $100 left in our stack but he doesn't he checks behind and says we're good we turn over the pocket kings and he flicks his cards into the muck $374 coming our way. We trapped him on the turn and probably get max value there with our kings. We're on to the next hand. We look down at 7, 10 of hearts. Second hand since Alex sat down and the second hand we're going to play with him. He raises it up to $15 blind. Yes, let me repeat that. He raised up to $15 blind and gets three callers. Actions on me. I'm not folding for $15 to a blind player. I put in the call and two others do as well. So we're going seven ways to the flop. Flops outstanding for us. It comes king, 10, 7. Bang, we flop two pair. 
The action surprisingly checks over to me. Six other players do not want to take a stab at it, so I decided to bet out for $55, looking to get value from any straight draws like 8-9, Queen Jack, any kings that have a pair are probably going to pay us off here. I bet out for $55. Surprisingly, only Alex puts in the call, so going heads up to the turn, which is one of the worst cards in the deck. It comes to King of Hearts. Our two pair is now counterfeited. We only have two pair kings and tens instead of tens and sevens. Additionally, any king is going to have trips, and Alex checks it over to us. I check it behind, and we're off to the river. River comes the deuce of spades, which doesn't change really anything. Alex checks it over to me for a third time, and I check it behind, just looking to get to a showdown. I show Alex the 10-7, and he turns over ace-jack of spades, so he had a gutter to the straight on the flop and just did not improve. Surprisingly, I take it down with my 10-7, $215 coming my way. Yeah, dang it. I told you I was going to get my money back. I'm finally up. I know. Well, thank you. All right, you guys, that does it from our session here at the Lodge. Got into that game for 300, rebought for like $560. We played for 10 hours and ultimately cashed out for like 481, net loss of 379. Don't forget the 1 3 cash out of $561 and the $400 profit we made in the live stream. Road trip total is going to be right here. We're still doing amazingly well after the sessions I didn't record. We booked a couple wins. If you guys like this type of content, drop a like on the video, share it with a friend, subscribe if you're not already. As always, good luck on the felt, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace! Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.